Hello! Ah, crap. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Gregorius Maths video. Today, we'll be looking at topology 2.1, which signifies that we're going to be looking at algebraic topology. So, to start off, we're going to have a relatively short video compared to the rest of the ones in the topology series, or I predict it will be short, um, about homotopy. Okay? So, first let's consider an example. So, the function f of x equals 1 plus um, 1 plus x squared times x minus 2 squared. Okay? And the function runs goes from the closed interval between 0 and 2 to the real line, okay? So what does this function look like? Well, roughly, it looks like this. I'll make it bigger, I'll make it... I'll pretend that this one here is... Looks like that. So it's nearly the constant function f of x equals 1, but with a small deviation at the top, okay? So, what we want to do with homotopy is to continuously deform this function into f of x equals 1, or let's call it g of x, okay? So, one way we can do it is by con constructing a family of functions. So, let's say f, of one, f sub 1 of x equals 1 plus 1 half x squared times x minus 2 squared. Then we get a function which is even closer to the constant function. So we have f sub 2 of x equal to 1 plus 1 over 3 x squared times x minus 2 all squared. It's even closer. It gets closer and closer and closer. Okay? But this is not exactly what we want to do. We want to index these functions using the closed interval between 0 and 1. Okay? So instead of using the integers, we can do this instead. We can have the family of functions f sub t of x. In fact, we'll just call them f sub t for now. And they run through t in a closed interval between 0 and 1. Okay? And f sub t of x is defined as being 1 plus 1 minus t x squared times x minus 2 squared, okay? So now, now that we have this function here, we also want it to be so that f sub 0 of x is equal to f of x, and we want it so that f sub 1 of x is, well, the function which we're continuously deforming it to, i.e. 1. Okay, so this is why we've constructed it like this, because f sub 0 of x is 1 plus, well, 1 times x squared is just x squared times this, which is precisely f of x, and f sub 1 is 1 plus, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 times this whole thing will be 0, we'll just get 1. So let's write this down. This means that f sub 0 of x equals f of x and f sub 1 of x equals, well, 1, okay? So notice how f sub t of x is in the real line for x in the closed interval between 0 and 1, 2, sorry, okay? And this whole family of functions is corresponding to is indexed by t in the closed interval between 0 and 1. So we can think of this function as inputting points pairs x, t in the closed interval between 0 and 2 across the closed interval between 0 and 1. Okay? We now have to put a topology on these. So, uh, using product spaces, which I did in topology 1.7. So, finally, we're dealing with topological spaces. Okay? And hence we can arrive at the definition of homotopy, okay? 
So. That's just gonna happen. Definition. Definition. Yeah, okay. Two continuous maps. Are F and G, sorry. Are homo topic if two continuous maps F and G are homo topic if there exists some F capital F which takes you from S cross I to T, okay, where I is the closed interval between 0 and 1, it's good to shorten it because it comes up so frequently when talking about homotopy and stuff, and S and T are topological spaces, okay, such that, okay, capital F of S0 is equal to F of S for all S, And f of s1 is equal to g of s. Okay, again for all s. So let's take a quick look at an example. Okay, say in general, so that was our first example, and we constructed a homotopy by f sub t of x equals this. So capital F of uh, x t for example is equal to this and then we can see that capital F of x zero would be f of x and capital F of y, okay etc etc so in fact we can generalize this very very easily to the whole of to all of the functions in the real line so for example if we have two if we have two continuous maps f and g okay um where f and they both go from the real line to the real line so i'm just writing it shorthand they both go from the real line to the real line because yeah why not just write it like that okay then f is homotopic to g that's all that's required they go from the real line to the real line. They're continuous, they're homotopic. Why? We can construct a function f of s zero, oh, sorry, f of s t is equal to one minus t times f of x plus t times g of x. Okay, why does this work? Well, this would imply that f of s0 is equal to f of x and also f of s1 is equal to g of x. Okay, hence there's a homotopy. Alright, so now I said I said this would be a short video, I'm just gonna finish by proving that this homotopy is an equivalence relation. Okay? So what that means is that F is always homotopic to itself. If F is homotopic to G, then G is homotopic to F. And if F is homotopic to G and G is homotopic to H, then F is homotopic to H. Okay? I know that... Uh, <laughs> I can't remember why the F being homotopic to itself is called reflexive or transitive. I think it's reflexive okay so we have to prove it's reflexive so anyway whatever it's called we're proving that f is always homotopic to f okay that's number one well this is obviously true because we can have f of s t equal to f of x okay implying that f of s zero is equal to f of x and f of s one is equal to f of x okay hence f is homotopic to itself that's very, very easy. Now, if G, if F is homotopic to G, that would imply that G is homotopic to F. Okay, why is this? Well, we have, if we have F of S, T, 
equal to, sorry, if we have f of s, 0 equal to f of x, and f of s1 equal to g of x, okay, then these two are homotopic, right? So we can construct an inverse function, kind of, g of s t equal to f of s, oh, sorry, not f of x, f of s, sorry, I'm so used to saying f of x that I'm getting mix, mixed up, mixed up? Okay, anyway, so f of s, um, 1 minus t, yes, okay, which would imply that g of s, 0, is equal to, well, f of s1, which is g of s, and that g of s1 is equal to f of s. Okay? Now, all that's left to prove is that, um, yeah, is the transitive property. So, if f is homotopic to g, g is homotopic to h, that would imply that f is homotopic to h. Okay, but why is this? Why is this true? Well, if we have capital F of S 0 equal to F of S, capital F of S 1 equal to G of S, if we have capital G of S 0 also equal to G of S, and we have capital G of S 1 equal to H of S, okay? Then we can construct a piecewise function, which is continuous by the gluing lemma, which I proved in the last video. Capital H of S T is equal to, um, well, it's equal to capital F of S 2T if T is in the closed interval between 0 and a half. Okay. Or capital G of S 2T minus 1 if T is in the closed interval between 1 half and 1. Okay? And now this continues by the gluing lemma. Is there a homotopy between F and a H though? Well, yes, it is. Why? Because H of S 0 is equal to f of s0 is equal to f of s okay sorry let me just rewrite this because i've been writing slanted h of s t is equal to uh, f of s 2t t t in the close of between zero and half is equal to g of s 2t t minus one Okay, sorry about that. I just had to rewrite it because it was too slanted. Okay. So now is this a homotopy between F and H though? Yes, because H of S zero is equal to F of S two times zero is zero is equal to F of S. And now h of s1 is equal to g, because, yeah, g of s, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1, quick maths, sorry, <laughs> um, which is equal to, oh, sorry, uh, h of s, yeah, there it is, h of s, okay? Therefore, f is homotopic to h. This completes the proof. Okay, and now I'm just going to leave it to you to prove that homotopies respect compositions, or in other words, um, if f is homotopic to g and h is homotopic to j, that would imply that f compose h is homotopic to g compose j. Quite a fun exercise, quite a simple one too, but, you know, just so you know that you've got the hang of it.
Goodbye.